Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday, and all of our guests today, including Farhan Lalji, TSN, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Get your season tickets for as low as $17 a game, or pick up a white spot pack, which includes four tickets and a $40 white spot gift card starting at $125. Get all the details at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. Day one of uh, Canucks training oh, yeah. camp, as we mentioned in uh, segment number one. Yep. Uh, joining us now to talk about that and about uh, some some football and a special moment for himself from TSN Farhan Lalji on his way to Victoria as we speak. How are you? Beautiful sunny day. You're going to hear seagulls in the background, my friend. It doesn't get any better than this on a beautiful September afternoon here on the West Coast. Are you actually on the ferry as we as we speak? I'm okay, waiting no. to board. Okay. Say, I said to the guy, I said to the the, the driver of the boat, saying, "Donnie and Dolly, please hold." And yeah. they said, no problem. They even have white spot <laughs> waiting for me on the ferry. Oh, 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 hold on a second, Farhan. Donnie and Dolly is one thing. But Farhan Lalji? Yeah. Tell us about Farhan Lalji Day <laughs> in, in New Westminster. We saw the story. What was that all about? Well, you know what? It, it should have been um, Mary Lalji Day because she's the one who does all the work. Or even Dolly Wall Day because we know that he's the he and the Mojo, the cultural icons here uh, at, at New Westminster Secondary and in that community. But... I, really cool honor. Um, certainly nothing I expected. You know, I was there for the Hayek football homecoming day, and we had we were doing our all-decade team, uh, our second all-decade team. Can't believe it's been 20 years. Hmm. So they call me up to the front, and I think I'm just there to kind of receive uh, every, you know, the guys on the all-decade team. And then the mayor's there, and he's like, well, I've got something for him. I'm like, what? Oh, you didn't know? No. He said, okay, well, I shouldn't have told you. And then um, they read this proclamation, and I was truly blown away. Um you know, for me, you guys know this. We've talked about it before. The time I spent there as the coach at New West was it just, you know, it was an honor, right? It was some of the best times of my life. It brought so much to myself and my family. And just to watch that program go from just an idea um, in my head to 2,500 fans being at a game and 20 years worth of alumni coming back and just the impact that it's made in the community. It's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. So um, I, I certainly don't feel like a name, sh a day should be named after me. And it was probably the most pretentious moment of my life, to be quite honest, because what do you say to that? But um, just, you know, thank you. I and mean, it was humbling. Yeah, well, well-deserved, Farhan. I, I know how much uh, the newest high acts meant to you, still still do uh, uh, mean to you. Yeah. So uh, switching gears uh, onto hockey, you're over are on your way to Victoria, uh, to Canucks uh, camp. Jim Rutherford believes the Canucks have a playoff team if everything goes right we're talking about special teams play goaltending injuries all of that do you buy that do you agree with that yeah I, I think that's a fair assessment right and i think a lot of us believe that because we know it's going to be a bubble team and in order for them to get through that bubble and to get into games in late april they do need a lot to go right and that hasn't happened for this team uh starting with thatcher demko right i mean we know this guy's an elite goaltender but we don't know if he can stay healthy for a full season so that's first and foremost because without him I think they're in trouble. Uh, Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson have got to take the next step. I mean, I think they're really good. If they have the same type of statistical seasons they have a year ago and everybody around them can stay healthy and get better, I think that gets them there. Uh, you know, can Mikheyev stay healthy? And can some of these young guys like uh, Pod Colson and Hoaglander take that next step? And, you know, you talked about the special teams and the penalty kill. Certainly they've brought players in that are going to make them better, guys that have had success on the penalty kill. And between that and systems play and all of it, I think they're in position – but Jim's right. They, they just don't have that kind of depth yet to withstand a whole bunch of things going wrong. So hopefully for, for a change, a bunch of things don't go wrong. Uh, one playoff appearance in eight years, uh, Farhan, is just not good enough uh, for a, an intelligent hockey market like Vancouver. It, it's got to be a whole lot better, and they can turn it around this year with all the right moves. One thing I like about is Tockett, and I, and I think with his uh, ability to start fresh at camp, his tempo, his pace, everything he's going to teach, you know, telling the players. I think that's uh, something that uh, a lot of people are not taking into account. I think Rick Tockett's going to do a good job this year. Yeah, I think he will too. And it's, look, from a Canucks fan perspective, you've seen this movie, right? Like last year was Bruce Boudreaux's first camp because he took over midway through the previous year. And, you know, we, but at the end of the day, this team has started so poorly the last two years. And I asked Rick about it yesterday. It's just the importance of the start because this team has played themselves out of the playoffs like 
literally by the end of November. It's been just awful the last two starts of the season. And he says, look, I don't want them to overly focus on that because that's going to lead to a bunch of guys squeezing their sticks. I want them to focus on the first day of training camp and just start getting the systems in play, getting the expectations in place. And that was something that began last year, right? And I think that's why the organization wanted to make the change when they made it, even if it cost them some money to do it. But, um, you know, you, you've got the roster built. He's had a chance to spend time in the offseason talking to guys about what the expectations are, what the systems will look like for those that weren't there to see it last year get implemented. And it's absolutely a good thing. And, and you know, I, I'm curious to see how he handles his preseason lineups and things like that, just because that start, whether he wants to admit it or not, is going to be important. So hmm. does it mean more veteran lineups in the preseason? Does it mean fewer camp battles, even though they said the right things yesterday about how there's going to be some big battles. So we'll see. Uh, Farhan, the Lions are in uh, Edmonton. Hey, look, uh, Bombers Ooh. got the weekend off. If they beat Edmonton, they're in first place. Uh, my question to you is the inconsistency of the quarterback and the interceptions and throwing into double coverage. <laughs> is that, That's got to be cleaned up, Farhan. There's too many picks uh, per game. Yeah, you know, it's it's a fair criticism when you look at the overall numbers, Rick, but the truth is is such a high percentage of those picks came in two games, right? And other than that, interceptions haven't been the reason this team has, has lost games or have been in trouble at various times. So I think the overall body of work that Vernon Adams has put out there has been good. You don't want to be holding your breath hoping it's not one of those games because in that Ottawa game, you know, all three interceptions were bad, right? Like, you know, the one he threw across his body was really bad, but even the first two were kind of – First shots, uh, you know, on, on corner routes into double coverage, and uh, they weren't good. And he knows that, and he's accountable for that. And he's not a guy that's going to sit there and make excuses and blame other people. So I, I believe in Vernon Adams, and I, I don't think he's going to be the problem. But, you know, this is going to be one of those games where it's not going to be a laugher like the first two against Edmonton where the Elks didn't score a point. Trey Ford's going to make the Lions nervous. And truly, if you give me a, a, a choice on who to be worried about, Vernon Adams or BC's defense, I'm more worried about the defense because hmm. since that last Edmonton game in six games, they've given up an average of 31 points per game. They need to get off the field on second down. They need to stop giving up the chunk plays. They need to get back to being that complete lockdown tackling unit we had here during the first half of the season. To me, that's the bigger concern, not Vernon Adams. Okay, uh, you're a proud uh, alum, New West Senior Secondary, but you're also a proud uh, alumni when it comes to Simon Fraser University. I can't remember if we talked about this last week, but w what are you hearing about the possibility uh, of the Canucks having their practice facility on top of Burnaby Mountain on the SFU campus? Yeah, you know, those discussions have happened. I, I don't think that is a done deal yet, right? Because I do think they're looking at other options. I can't imagine... Uh, the players would have that as their first choice, wanting to go out there. Most of them don't like going to UBC. Uh, SFU is even farther for most of them who live in Vancouver. Um, when you hear Jim Rutherford yesterday talking about hoping that it's in place for next off season, if that's the case, you're probably looking at an existing building, right? Like, you know, these things take time to get permits and go through plans and make all of that happen. There's no way that the Canucks can go up to SFU and have that ready by next off season. So I'm not saying it's not happening. I just think it's not... Uh, it's not a done deal. There are other places that are being considered as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, is Farhan Lalji Day going to be an annual thing or is it just a one-off? Do you know? Have they told you? Well, a, a, apparently oh. it's an annual thing. I'm going to try to say very little about it with hopes that it can just fly under the radar in subsequent years, if that's okay with you, Rick. I gave New West eight good years at uh, NWSS. <laughs> You know, was it at same, nine? And Steve Ewan, who's who's uh, Ian McClatchy, yeah. Mark yeah. Jonovich, yeah. Dolly Wall, and yeah. they pick you for uh, what? I mean, come, he's got to have he someone the football on, team. They won a provincial he's title. Got, he's got someone on the school board. It's ridiculous. He's got someone. No, I used there. to. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's I, right. I used They're to. right there. Right there. Out of there quick. <laughs> all, all kidding aside, Farhan, congratulations. Uh, have a good time over in Victoria. All right, thanks, guys. We'll talk soon.